Good morning, Euphorians. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick review because I just watched a really, really good movie and I uh, figured I'd do a quick VHS roulette because uh, I just found it. I just went to, uh, we have a flea market on 28th Street that I think everybody should check out. There's always cool people hanging out and all kinds of shit you can buy. Uh, the only thing was, it was really, really fucking hot, and um, this guy was selling tapes like four for a dollar, and really great deal, and a lot of really cool tapes. Um, and uh, I met my friend Jason Roth there, really awesome dude. And the only thing was, after I got my sack of tapes, I was super thirsty and I wanted to get something to drink, and I stopped by this booth where, you know, they're cooking up hot dogs or something like that and everybody's they're all like wearing confederate flag hats and shirts and everything and and i know you know i know you're proud of the south or whatever but um i didn't really want to get water from them <laughs> so i mean it's just another kind of thing of you know all kinds of people there right uh, anyway, so I found <laughs> I found this incredible film, which is not called Fly Pape, but uh, it's actually called Fly Paper, which you know we don't use it as much now. But Fly Paper is you know that sticky, disgusting paper that dangles from the ceiling and then gets covered in bugs. Now we have fucking guns filled with salt that we like cock and then we shoot. That's what we do to insects now, so. It's the future. And uh, so I picked this one up because I used to really, really dislike Craig Schiffer. But over the years, I've gained an appreciation for Craig Schiffer because he's in a lot of really shitty movies and he does a great job almost every time. Uh, that double take movie, obviously, I didn't really enjoy that, but he's done other stuff like... Um, I just saw Turbulence one, or 3, um, he wasn't in the first one, that was uh, Ray Liotta, but he was in Turbulence 2 and 3, and 3 is incredible. If you've never seen Turbulence 2 or 3, which you probably haven't, go and see those. Uh, Turbulence 3 is all about this like heavy metal band that wants to play their final show in a plane, and it's going to be, it's really stupid, but it's great. And it's very unexpected. And that's another, that's this movie. It's absolutely unexpected. So we have, here's the lineup. And a couple surprises here. We got Lucy Liu, who in the film has a naked sex scene where she basically has sex with this slacker guy that calls himself an alchemist. And he's mixing spider, or not spider, uh, snake venoms so he can live forever? It doesn't make any sense, but it's fine. Um, and she has sex in an empty pool with this guy, surrounded by rattlesnakes, and they're getting bit by rattlesnakes while they're having sex. This movie's wild. It's It never gets boring. It's 111 minutes long, but it, it never gets boring. There's so much interesting, cool shit. And the acting is really good. Robert Loggy is in it, and he's fantastic in it. He plays... Um, an older gentleman that, uh, he's kind of done some illegal activities in his life, so he has, you know, a ton of money, and he really cares about this young girl, uh, who's a heroin addict, and he wants to take care of her and everything. It's kind of hinted at that he might be her father and everything. So he works with this, I don't know the actor's name, but he's a very attractive man. You would see him a lot in the 90s. And, um, he's basically, he works with this guy. I'm, I'm going all over the place with this film, but there are a lot of subplots going on at the same time, but it never gets confusing, it never gets, you know, overfilled with, uh, too much information or too much stuff. It's always interesting. There's always something, um, fun happening, uh... John C. McGinley is also in this, who, uh, if you don't know him, I guess people, I don't know, who wouldn't know him? I, you might not know the name, but the extremely funny guy in Scrubs, 
uh, I didn't even watch Scrubs, and I think, still think he's the funny guy from Scrubs, but he's also recently in the Belko experiment, and he was incredible in that. Basically, anything he's ever in, he is great. And he plays a, basically a minor character, but he makes a huge character because he's such a great actor. He plays a guy that is basically, um, he's baited by this woman to, he has a fiancé, and his fiancé pays this woman to bait him and to see if he'll be faithful. And of course, he's a piece of shit, so he's not. And, um then all this shit starts happening to him. And that's just one of the side plots. So we got, here are all the things that are happening. We got Craig Schiffer and this, uh, his partner named Leon, who, in the very first scene, they're talking about uh, how Leon used to work in a slaughterhouse, and they would take the ducks when they got really horny, and then they would fuck the ducks. Okay, and... Uh, Anyway, those guys, those two guys go and rob a meth lab, and Lucy Liu's there cooking meth. Uh, they go and chain her up and, to, you know, start cooking meth for them. Uh, God, and then there's Robert Loggia and Pretty Boy. Um, they go and find this heroin-addicted girl, and they set her up in a hotel room to basically get her off heroin. And Pretty Boy is basically... Uh, He's given the charge of watching her and watching over her and everything. Uh, at the same time, uh, John C. McGinley is being um, handcuffed to his bed, uh, which we find out his bed is right next door in the apartment building, right next door to where Heroin Girl and Pretty Boy are kind of hanging out. And so he's being chained up on his bed by Bait um, Woman. And, uh, you know, to just do sexy time or whatever. She walks off, and then his fiance comes in and, like, you know, you motherfucker! And, like, uh, is gonna cut his dick off and everything. It's very good. And uh, everybody in this is just so fucking good. And there's, like, there's not a shitload of action. There's not, um, not, there's not a hell of a lot of plot, but it's just... I loved it. I thought every moment, I'm just like, what? what is going to happen next? And you have no idea what's ha what's going to happen because it's just this kind of like great run-on sentence that you have no idea where it's going and you don't really care because it's so much fun to watch. All right, so I was going back to all the subplots. So we got Lucy Liu ends up escaping from the new meth lab and runs into this slacker guy who's an alchemist and who works with Snake Venom and uh, is obsessed with this valley um, in another country where basically people live for 140 years because they're uh, drinking this special thing, and he's like, that's my plan. I'm coming up with this special juice that's going to you know, make people live forever. Those two kind of fall in love and uh, have sex in a snake pit, basically, and... That's a very beautiful scene. And then that, that story's kind of over. And then we move on to Craig Schiffer and Leon uh, eventually abduct Robert Loggia and convince him to get some money out of his secret bank account. And then Leon double-crosses Craig Schiffer and shoots him in the back of the head. And uh, then Craig Schiffer lives somehow. And, God, I just wanted to... I'm going to make this pretty quick review, even though I'm all, almost at 10 minutes already, but I just wanted to talk about my favorite fucking scene in this whole movie. The whole movie's great, but, uh, so this is after Craig Schiffer gets shot in the back of the head, uh, to which he, right afterwards, walks to, like, a Walgreens and gets some super glue and just kind of, you know, puts it on the back of his head, and somehow that heals him. In, in the movie world, that it heals and then he, so he, he, he does that, he goes and confronts um, Pretty Boy and Heroin Girl, at, because at some point they ended up, they end up going to the meth lab where Lucy Liu was and escaped from. He confronts them there, uh, starts shooting up the place, and then Pretty Boy stabs a knife into the top of his head. And then you're like, okay, Craig's dead, finally. 
and he's still not dead. He's not dead. He just goes, after they take off, he goes and uh, hitches a ride. And then out of nowhere, Jeffrey Jones shows up from uh, Beetlejuice. The, the dad in Beetlejuice shows up uh, in this minivan with his wife and daughter in the back. And they just pick him up. And they are so funny because they're so uh, just very blasé about uh, this guy who has a knife stuck in his head. And uh, they're, gonna, they're taking him to a hospital. But first he's like... I need to eat something, please, can I eat something, and uh, then uh, he's like, well, I might have something in the car, and he pulls out like a bag of chips, and she, it, the, the wife is like mad at him, like, you're eating chips, really, and I'm like, there's a guy with a knife in his head in the car, and in any other movie, it probably wouldn't have worked, but Jeffrey Jones and his wife are so funny, and the daughter is really funny in the back seat because she's like, is that a real knife? And she starts like messing with this knife in his head and he's like, ugh. Anyway, they stop at a fast food place and he's like, I want 22 cheeseburgers, 22 fries, and 22 onion rings. And the guy's like, okay. And it, he's, they're so nice to do this for this guy. I mean, obviously they sh should have probably taken him to the hospital, but... You know, they're, they're really nice. And so they're all just very joyous and everything. And um, so then they take him to the hospital. And the funniest goddamn scene in the whole movie. Some so For some reason, he's still, uh, Craig Schiffer's still holding on to a um, steering wheel from the car he crashed into the meth lab with. And so they drop him off at the hospital. And he's the orderly's taking him away. And they're like, bye! And... Greg Schiffer is like looking up, uh, probably obviously suffering from brain damage and all kinds of shit, and he's holding on to his little steering wheel, and he's crying, and he's so clearly emotional, and he's just like, "Bye," <laughs> and they're, and then they start when he's wheeled away, Jeffrey Jones and family just start laughing about, so they say, uh, uh they're like. Do you think he's going to be okay? Well, the doctor did say once they pull the knife out of his head, he's a goner. And then they all just start laughing about it. And they're like, well, what, I wonder if they just cut it off. Yeah, they should just use a Sawzall and just cut that thing up. And I'm like, this is fucking bizarre. But incredible movie. I don't, I've never heard of it. And it, it I think it came out right when they're doing kind of a, a slew of kind of Pulp Fiction ripoffs. It, it, at least it feels like that because you know it's it deals with crime and intermingling plots and everything but this is way better than any of those other pulp fiction ripoffs like two days in the valley or um god things to do in Den denver when you're dead actually i think that might have come before but uh this is just really good i absolutely recommend this if you can find it anywhere watch it and you won't be disappointed there's Lucy Liu's in it, um, she's also in it, I think, oh yeah, and the opening scene is really weird too, so there are these two kids, this, this is nothing to do with the rest of the movie, but there are these two kids, and they're riding their, their uh, bikes, and this car is trying to get around them on this really, like, tight street, finally scoots around them, and then the kids pull up to it, and there's this guy just beating the living shit out of this car, and it's already set on fire, and he's screaming, and he's like, What do you want? What are you looking at? And then he starts yelling at the car again, and then he dives head first into a burning car, and it's like, Whoa! And then he's just, like, screaming and dying, and that's the beginning of the fucking movie. Anyway, so I looked this guy up. Uh, Klaus Hotch is the director. He's never made another movie. This was his first and last film. He wrote and directed this. Um, he got his start with actually working on trauma films. He did, um, he, he was a car camera operator on uh, Sergeant Kabuki Man and also Toxic Avenger Part 2. So he's really good, and this was a ri really original, fun film. And if you can find it anywhere, uh, Fly Pape or Fly Paper, it's, I didn't pay this, but it's worth it, that... This is worth the whole three dollar score I got from the uh, from the flea market. And check out that flea market. Check out this movie. And uh, thank you for watching.
Have a good day, everybody.